Hi again, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. Uh, we are very happy to have you here with us today. Uh, so today in this webinar, we'll be focusing on engaging audiences online with tools uh, that we have developed at the En-ROADS uh, Climate Simulator. And before we get started, I would like to guide you all to the control panel. Uh, so if you check the control panel, you can see a questions tab there. So please feel free to drop in your questions over there as we proceed with this webinar. Uh, we will make sure to get back to you. Uh, and just in case uh, we are not able to answer you back uh, at the moment, uh, we would request you all to write to us at support at redclimateinteractive.org. So please uh, drop in your questions about the game, about the workshop, or about this webinar yourself in the questions box. Uh, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, with this, I would like to pass on uh, the webinar to my colleague Ellie Johnston, who is Climate and Energy Lead at Climate Interactive, and she will be the presenter for today's session. Thank you so much again for joining us. Great. Thanks so much, Bendio, and thank you all so much for joining us. And we're going to jump into inroads and talk some about that. And I know some of you on the call are very familiar with inroads. I see it in the list a few ambassadors. I think we'll probably have over 100 people here on the webinar uh, right now. And we've had two other previous webinars in the last 24 hours that have had hundreds and hundreds of people on them as well. So it's just really encouraging to see uh, all the people engaged and interested and uh, curious about these resources that we have. I'm gonna do my best to walk through the different options that we have Feel free, as Bindu suggested, to write your questions into the questions box, and we will try and get to them as much as possible and try and speak to uh, the needs and the, and the questions that you have as we go along. So let's just get started then. So what we're gonna cover today is some tips for how to engage people online. I'm gonna talk about three main different things that we offer. Um, at Climate Interactive. So we have the Inroads Climate Workshop, the Climate Action Simulation, and then the Guided Assignment. We also have some other tools out there in the Climate Interactive suite of things, uh, but today the primary focus of these webinars is going through these three, three, uh, three types of experiences that you can offer to people. And then we'll talk some at the end about some of the nuances of how we can talk about climate change and engagement amidst the current uh, coronavirus crisis. So thank you all again for joining us. And I'll get started here by just doing a quick demo of En-ROADS. And I'm gonna turn my camera off here so you can see the screen more prominently uh, because I know not everyone here is familiar with En-ROADS. So just real quick, what we might do in an En-ROADS climate workshop setting is we could start by asking uh, the group, the audience, some kind of question. And here, let me, um, let me pull up a question that we could use. So one question that we've been using of lately is, what do you think we should invest in uh, to address the climate crisis? And so uh, right into the questions box, we'll test that out and tell us some ideas that you have. And then I'm gonna flip it over to En-ROADS and we can test some of those out. And I'll ask Bindu here in a minute, to give me those and let me go back over to En-ROADS. And before I take your inputs, let me just orient you all to what you're looking at here on the En-ROADS interface. So on the left here, we have global sources of primary energy. Uh, coal is this darker brown line going up from the year 2000 all the way out to 2100. Then in, uh, we have oil line here in red, gas, renewable energy, bioenergy, nuclear, and new technology there at the bottom. On the right, this graph is showing temperature change from the year 2000 out to 2100. We expect with this scenario that we would lead towards 4.1 degrees Celsius of temperature change by the end of the century. Uh, and we can change the graphs here. And we can look at other things, say maybe uh, greenhouse gas net emissions, for example. But Bindu, tell me uh, what's, what's something that one person has written in, what is a type of investment that we might explore to address the climate crisis? A lot of people are 
are expecting more renewable energy, more investment in renewable energy. Yeah. So here on the left, under energy supply, we have renewable energy. And I can move this to subsidize renewable energy, make it cheaper, or I can tax uh, renewable energy. And so to have more of it, we'll make it renewable energy cheaper. And before I move the slider here, think to yourself, what do you expect might happen if we had a really big subsidy on renewable energy? And again, this green line here, that's the renewable energies line, energy line. We've got greenhouse gas net emissions. Think to yourself, what do you think is gonna happen? I'll slowly move this here. And so let's subsidize renewable, I'll highly subsidize it. And you can see, so that by the end of the century here, renewable energy is subsidized and it's uh, the dominant source of energy. Although we, other, we have other things here in the mix. And you can see that lowers greenhouse gas net emissions. And I'll take one more. And again, this is just a quick demo. I'm not going to sufficiently go through all the different pieces of the workshop, but Bindu, what's one other thing that you see people writing in about? Yeah, John writes, phase out coal quickly. Phase out coal quickly. So there's different ways we could phase out coal. I could just tax it here and again, I'll do that uh, and think to yourself before I move this, what do you think might happen to this coal line here? And also what might happen to the other variables? So I'm gonna tax coal, watch that go down. I'm also, I'll click the replay last change button here at the top and we'll watch that happen again. So notice as coal goes down, what else do you see happening? See that? blue line of gas changing a little bit, renewables and oil um, also changing a little bit there. Um, so that's representing a very high tax on coal. Another way that you could address coal is you could go under into the advanced settings and you could do something like uh, adjust the percent reduction in coal use uh, and do that. I won't, I won't go there now, uh, but that's in a longer, more extensive version of the Inroads Climate Workshop. Uh, an approach you could take. And the way this would work is we would continue, um, Bindu could keep synthesizing the, your different inputs and uh, we could test out. And so maybe somebody would say, how about let's stop deforestation? Somebody else might say, what about the energy efficiency of transport or buildings of industry? How about electric cars? What about agriculture and food choices? Let's reduce methane and the other gases. Um, what about a carbon price? Sometimes we hear a lot about that and you could see we can quickly get to two degrees. Somebody might suggest, oh, how about tree planting and afforestation? We do some of that and we tip our scenario so that we're below two degrees. We could keep pushing it even further towards 1.5, but I just want to just demonstrate how inroads works. This is what we're talking about as I get into some of the different formats uh, that we you might use inroads in in an online setting. So I'm gonna switch back over here to the slides. And one other key piece of the workshop that I did wanna highlight is we oftentimes ask people in the workshop, what would you love about being a part of the scenario that we created? So think about the scenario that we just created over here, uh, where we have a big tax on coal, cheap renewable energy, lots of energy efficiency. What would you love about being a part of this future? We can write it into the questions box. Some of the things that we've heard, we heard last week when we asked this question on one of the online inroads workshops was things like less pollution and healthier ecosystem. It would be the most important thing to do in human history or just no fear or guilt uh, about something like choosing to have a family or a more healthy, holistic society and happier people. Um, are there are there things that people have written in? What what would you love about being part of a a, a below two degree world a world in which we had addressed climate change? Yeah, I can see a couple of responses here. So people are writing like more harmony with the environment, less suffering, less pollution, less pollution and a healthier ecosystem, brighter future and more hope. I yeah. would be I would have honored my grandfather's legacy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so orienting people to the positive outcomes that can come from all of this is so important. Thanks, thanks for reading those out, Bindu, and thanks to you all for writing those in. So some examples of virtual engagement with inroads. 
just in the last week, I mentioned this, the, those quotes that I just, just showed you. Uh, last week at this time, we had 586 different participants uh, coming in from 73 different countries around the world participating in our workshop. If you miss that workshop, maybe this is your first En-ROADS webinar, stay tuned because next week at the same time, we're going to do another online En-ROADS workshop. And so look for that and you can register for that next week and join us. Um, here's some other examples of uh, En-ROADS workshops that have been run. Some have been run by the Climate Interactive team and others, maybe people like you out there have already registered your events and run them. In the last two weeks alone, we've had events in the United States, Canada, Brazil, is Israel, Italy, Thailand, Argentina, Germany, Australia, Austria, Netherlands, Norway, and Taiwan. Uh, that's great, and I hope that you all listening in will help us expand our geographic reach and reach uh, even more people through kind of these online events. Here is uh, one of our En-ROADS Climate Ambassadors, Molly Sullivan in Virginia, leading the En-ROADS workshop using Zoom. Here's another ambassador in Austria uh, leading the En-ROADS workshop. Um, one of our ambassadors down in Brazil uh, played our world climate simulation game and he used WhatsApp as a way of uh, organizing the groups in the, in the role-playing game. Here's uh, Nikki Zimmerman writing on Twitter about her students uh, participating in an event. Sean, Isaac, uh, Tarek, Johanna, your own, and so you can see lots and lots of people around the world have been already starting to experiment and try out like how does this work as a way of engaging people. Many times it's educators and teachers and maybe there are many of you all listening in who are thinking about your students and trying to find content for them, but also we have people in the business sector as well as in uh, more like nonprofit organizations and community groups that are engaging people that way. It really comes in a lot of different forms. I have, I know people who are just, you know, really care a lot about climate change and are hosting dinner parties or just uh, ways in which to hang out with and engage friends and family around climate. They'll do uh, an inroads event. So, and the, the three main ways in which we think about these different inroads events are one, the inroads climate workshop. That's kind of what I just dem demonstrated. This could be done one on one, uh, or it could be done with a group of hundreds and hundreds. Uh, it's pretty adaptable to different size audiences and also different amounts of time that you have. Then there's the climate action simulation. I'll talk a little bit more about that in depth, but it's a role playing game that we have to. Uh, have people play different roles. They get to play the role of conventional energy or fossil fuel companies and energy efficiency groups and a climate activists. And so they can take on a role and, and explore what, what the positions of those groups and those different stakeholders might be in terms of uh, taking on climate action. And then the third way we think about uh, inroads engagement is the, what we call the inroads guided assignment. So this is like kind of a worksheet that could be given. We, we particularly think about it as useful within the education setting, where as a um, educator, you might not have the time or even the technology to be able to lead a whole En-ROADS event. Uh, so you assign students uh, the, the guided assignment to, you, to do on their own time, uh, and they can work through it at their own pace. Um, these three things are kind of, a part of this larger set of, of different ways in which we think about um, engagement. So at the very easiest level, uh, there's just create a scenario, uh, share it on En-ROADS. And here, I'll, I'll just show you all how this work works. So I'll flip back over here. Here's a scenario that we made. If you go up here into the upper right-hand corner, you can click share on Twitter, share uh, on LinkedIn, copy the scenario link, so here, I'll copy the scenario link, and I'm going to actually just paste it into the chat, and then you all can um, check it out on your own computer. Here, I'm just typing it in. Here's our scenario. Um, okay, look for that. And so you can click on that link and share it. Or uh, if you're on Twitter, you know, share it over on Twitter. And you can say, here's a climate scenario built with 
and roads and then tell, tell the world about it. So we really encourage that. That's that's easy thing to do. Uh, then, then the next thing you have is that you do kind of what you're doing right now, which is you participate in an inroads event. This webinar, of course, is more geared towards kind of training you in how to lead an event. It's not a full inroads event itself. Uh, but like I said, next tomorrow, next week, excuse me, uh, we will have some more events on the calendar that you can join. Or, you know, and then as I mentioned, we have the student assignment. You just direct your students to participate in it. Or maybe, maybe you think it's useful for your community group too. We'd love to hear about it if uh, if you're using the guided assignment. Then you can do things like you can invite an inroads ambassador to lead an event for you. I'll talk a little bit about more about that in a, in a bit. Um, or you can lead an introductory session of inroads and then direct students uh, to the guided assignment. So maybe that's a little bit of what what inroads is, how it works, that kind of thing, and then students take off with the assignment. And then we have you can lead the inroads climate workshop online and there's different ways to do this you can invite an ambassador or a climate interactive member to to help you out uh, you can get help from a colleague or you can just do it by yourself and then kind of what we conceive of as the most difficult thing to run online is the climate action simulation and that's just particularly because there are different breakout groups and so techno you have to kind of use technology in creative ways to make sure that uh, everyone stays organized and it takes a lot more facilitation technique, uh, but totally doable. We've, we've been piloting it and uh, I would encourage you to, to jump into any of these. But before I go into more detail about the, what those different types are, I just wanna start by giving you all some overall tips on, on how to do online facilitation. So the first thing is just go for it. Uh, I know sometimes you can think about this and maybe you don't feel like you're ready or that kind of thing. And I would say practice, practice, but you're only gonna get better by doing it. So get out there and get a group of your friends together, get your uh, family members together. You know, Maybe you are uh, socially distancing, distancing and stuck in a house with some roommates and you guys are bored of watching movies or whatever you're doing. Uh, do an inroads workshop together uh, and explore that. Some other tips. Um, so we, many of you all, I know uh, we've been in touch with several of you that have had you had events planned in person, but now they're online. Or many many people have been using online software for a while, but for those of you that are new to webinar platforms, uh, I'd encourage you to take some time to familiar familiarize yourself with the platform you are using. We're using GoToWebinar today. Um, Climate Interactive as a team has used this platform for many years. Uh, Zoom is also really popular right now uh, and that might work well for you, but I know there's a bunch of other platforms out there and depending on which country you're in, uh, the availability of these different platforms ranges. Uh, so make sure that you are just familiarized with the platform as you get going and work with a host. So maybe you're not the most tech savvy person and then you can work with somebody else who can help you have it all figured out. So in the case of today, uh, for example, on the back end, we have Bindu and also Linda on our team is, is there answering questions and helping, to, helping me manage some of the technology and all of the different features we have out there. Another tip, uh, when you can send out resources or advanced readings to people uh, before before your event begins and also during the event. So even something as simple as like what I just did where it was send you all the scenario so you can go check it out. That's, that's the kind of thing, uh, what we mean there by send out resources. Then uh, the other thing I would say as you're preparing to run your event, open uh, inroads in several different browser tabs. So over here in my browser, I have the scenario we just made, but if somebody had asked a question, they're like, oh, I wanna see what the impact of taxing uh, oil alone would be. And then I could flip over just to this other tab I have uh, where I've got inroads also loaded and I could do something like test, okay, what's the impact of a very high oil tax 
alone. So sometimes that's helpful. Uh, and just as a, as a thing to note, you can run inroads in multiple tabs. Some more tips. Um, I you can you saw that I did this. Uh, my my screen here is pretty well full screen already. But if I want to hide things even further, and I and I would encourage this is go use this full screen button here at the top of the inroads toolbar. That really gets rid of all the clutter on your screen, especially if you have a whole bunch of uh, favorite pages and things that appear on your on your browser. Use that full screen mode just to keep everything as smooth and decluttered as possible. Um, that's a key one. And then, let me see here, there we go. Um, and then practice alternating between your slides and the simulator. Uh, that's another key step here. So you can see I've, I'm running full screen mode and then I've, I'm, I'm using a computer that has a, a system where I can flip over and flip my screen back and forth. So I hope that's working well uh, with the webinar platform today. Uh, but yeah, practice uh, all these different kind of technological features and it will make the experience so much smoother for your uh, participants. Now to turn to some of the more facilitation tips. So less on the technology side. And this is, this is about how you show up to a webinar and think about leading it. And one of the things we suggest is that before the webinar begins, really think about what your intention is, what the focus of the webinar is, and what kind of energy you're going to bring to it. It's a very weird thing. I am sitting in my house right now, it's 10 o'clock at night, and I'm talking to my computer. That's weird, right? Um, it's not what humans have evolved to, to do well. I don't have a lot of feedback. I can't see your faces out there. So think about how you as a facilitator can just summon all of that intention and then just keep rolling through it. Know why you are here. What, what are you trying to get out of the whole experience? Think about the arc, particularly if you're leading something like the Inroads Climate Workshop. It's helpful to have kind of how you begin and you work through the different parts and then how does it conclude? What, where, where does the whole workshop flow to? Um, and then choose to be engaging. So this kind of goes along with this weird setting where we don't know, I don't have a lot of, I can't see your faces out there, um, but I'm gonna doing my best to hopefully to keep you engaged as we, as we roll through all of, all of these different aspects. Um, and then the other thing, if you're on webcam, uh, look at it as much as possible. Look at the camera um, and just remember to, it takes practice. And I think in these times right now where a lot of us are very new to webinar platforms, there's, you know, your audience is going to be forgiving. So uh, you can acknowledge up front, you know, I'm still figuring this out. And particularly if you're working with a friendly group of, uh, you know, your your local chapter of your environmental organization or whatever it might be, uh, people people will understand. But um, yeah, I would encourage you to practice and uh, just like anything, you will get better at it over time. Some other facilitation tips, and I hope I've been practicing the, these for you all, but, but slow down, pause, you know, take a deep breath. I've got a glass of water here, you know, I'm gonna take a sip and and so that way, people who are listening, they can catch up. Sometimes there are uh, internet glitches and things where the audio can, can get lost. Um, I imagine tonight, uh, well, today, wherever you all are out in the world, not all of you all speak uh, English as your native language. So I'm trying to recognize that. And I hope that uh, my pace is, uh, is able to keep up with. Um, some other tips. Keep it interactive, so use things like ask questions and using polls or figure out ways to keep people engaged. Then um, if, when you're talking about inroads, and I tried to do this earlier, but uh, highlight where people should be looking. So when you're at inroads, there's a lot of different lines going on. If you're new to it, it can sometimes be daunting and you might not know where to look. So you could say something like, Look at the green line here. This is showing renewables. See how it's higher than the other types of energy? 
Um, so that's important. Then hit the replay last change button. That's it. This is what it looks like. Again, let me flip back over to it. Uh, you can see here uh, the replay last change button and uh, you can do that as a way to replay changes. Practice, practice, and then of course just do it. Um, some tips on answering questions. So uh, Linda and Bindu are answering your questions as they're coming in uh, and I'll take some questions here in a bit. But First off, just acknowledge them. Uh, thank you all for writing in your questions. They're, they're, they're great. And then try and keep those responses light and friendly, uh, especially when they're coming up uh, in, in groups where people are uh, going off mute, for, for example, to ask a question. Uh, point people to additional resources again throughout the answering questions. We'll try and guide you to places where you can read more in depth uh, and where we don't have sufficient time to write out the full answer. And then for you, uh, just like for us, uh, we have a team of people that work to write in replies to different questions. Like we're, we are here to support you in being an excellent facilitator and uh, helping to make sense of the inroads simulator. So if you don't know the answer to a question, you know, again, acknowledge it, be friendly, great question. Uh, and then write in, please send it to support at climateinteractive.org and the team there can get back to, back to you all with a more detailed answer. We'll do our best. Sometimes it takes us a, a couple days to get back, but we will try and get back to you uh, as much as possible. Um, uh, one other thing when it comes to webinar facilitation is there are different roles that people play. And tonight we have, there are three of us uh, I'm playing the role of presenter, doing the primary amount of speaking. Then Bindu, she welcomed everyone uh, as the host and organizer. She's also watching the chat and the questions box. And if we had any audio trouble or that kind of thing, she would be there to step in and let me know that uh, something maybe wasn't wasn't working right. Then the answer of questions. Uh, Linda Chung on our team is playing that role uh, right now. She's uh, answering a lot of the questions uh, with Bindu. That you all are writing in and and then but no like we have a this is a big webinar right now uh, a lot of times it's just one of us that will play this role so for smaller events one person can manage all of the roles uh, you only have so many questions coming in and things like the managing the technology might be something you just are able to do yourself so don't worry about it if you don't have all three people, but know that it is helpful to have a couple people uh, familiar with the technology that you're using and supporting that. So again, three formats that we're thinking about, I'll walk through these, the workshop, the climate action simulation game, and then the inroads guided assignment. Uh, but before I get into that, let me do a quick poll and we will... Uh, take that and give you all an opportunity to weigh in. So the poll is, which form uh, are you most interested in? So that we're just curious, uh, are you interested in the climate action simulation game, the role-playing game, the inroads climate workshop, or the assignment? And I'll give you all a few seconds here to fill that in. Um, And Bindu, at this point too, um, how is everything going? Are there questions that I should attend to now or um, keep going after the poll? Yeah, I think we can go on, go ahead with the poll. Okay, great. And thanks everyone for voting. We're at 70% voted, 75%. Thanks for your participation. And I will give it just a few more seconds. Okay, that is the majority of everyone. And let me share the results. So what we find is that of the 100 of you that are here on the webinar tonight, uh, there is a tie, look at that, uh, between people who are interested in the Inroads Climate Workshop and the Climate Action Simulation Game. Very interesting. And then a smaller minority of you are interested in the inroads assignment. That's great. That's helpful to see. And it's actually been different. Uh, so this is the third webinar uh, that we've held in the last day. 
and I think on this morning's webinar, uh, 12 hours or so ago, we saw that the climate action simulation game was the most popular. Then uh, eight hours ago, there was uh, the Inroads Climate Workshop took it was the most interesting to people, and now right now it's a tie. Uh, cool. Well, well, let's keep rolling, and let me talk some about these different um, uh, types. But before I do that, let me just remind you that you can you can do this yourself, and we definitely, definitely encourage you to go for it. Just do it. Um, take the steps to train yourself and watch our training webinars uh, to become familiar in this, and know that there are 110 plus ambassadors. Uh, that people who around the world in 28 different countries who have taken the En-ROADS training series themselves and have already run a couple events. Some of them are much more experienced. They've run dozens and dozens of events, but then some of them are, are new. You can reach out to these people. So on this page, you know, somebody like Eduardo, who's been, he's actually been running events for years and years with Climate Interactive's tools. You can uh, read more about Eduardo and as well as contact him. His page is pretty fleshed out. Uh, in some of the cases, other people, they might just have an email address or a link to their LinkedIn page. But uh, do check out the ambassadors page. You can find that on the Climate Interactive website. If you go to about, and then you can click on inroads ambassadors here and see all of these different people and see the different languages that they present in and um, whether they might be interested in helping you facilitate your event. The other thing you can do is you can invite us to lead. We are a pretty small team at Climate Interactive, so there's a fair chance that we might not be available, but uh, sometimes, you know, it doesn't hurt to contact us uh, and, and see if we're around. Here's our Climate Interactive team. Uh, you can see Bindu and Linda, who are on the webinar tonight, but there are many others uh, on our team as well. So, the En-ROADS Climate Workshop. Let me get into that. So I demoed a little bit of it. I, I showed you all some examples of the workshop that have already been held recently. Um, one key piece of the workshop that we typically do, and in, if you're facilitating this online, you might give people a copy of this. This is the one-page En-ROADS Guide to the Control Panel. Give people this in advance, or uh, you could send them the link to it uh, in the chat box, and we could do that now. I don't know, Bindu or Linda, maybe you all could grab the link to the, the one-page guide to the control panel and send that uh, on over to people as a way to just guide them to what the different sliders are that we have. So some tips then on facilitating the En-ROADS Climate Workshop. So first off, we have recordings of the workshop uh, that you can watch online. Uh, if you go to our En-ROADS page, you can check some of those out and look, at, look for the videos or you can participate in one. Uh, like I said, we have some coming up next week, and then we'll have some coming up around uh, Earth Day, which is April 22nd. We don't have those on the calendar yet, but they will be coming soon. Uh, send people the one-page guide to the control panel in the chat. Uh, another tip, if you have a smaller group, um, turn the audio on. Let people interact. Um, that's, a, that's a fun way. Uh, to get people engaged and help them stay involved in, in the workshop. For a larger group, uh, it's usually not possible to try, turn audio on, so leave audio off and then rely on the chat or the questions box. It really depends on the web platform you're using, what features you have available, but uh, the chat or questions box is an effective way to chime in and communicate with the group. If your platform has breakout rooms, uh, then you could use them in groups of three to five. Uh, we have been experimenting with this. The, the software Zoom has, has breakout rooms if, at a certain paid level. Um, so that is one platform that we know of that has breakout groups, which has been fun to experiment with. GoToWebinar, which we're using tonight, doesn't have that feature. Um, but that can be, what the breakout rooms is, is if you have, uh, say, 100 people on your webinar or your event, then you could divide them and then people could talk to each other in smaller groups, uh, which is, again, another way to make it interactive and keep people engaged. Then halfway through uh, your event, send people, uh, participants, the link to the inroad scenario. I did that earlier. 
but you could you can uh, share that and encourage people to share their link as you've created it. And then there's this question again. Ask people, what would you love about being part of that two degree future? And oftentimes what we do in the context of this question is we ask people to take a minute of silence and definitely watch the clock, you know, make sure it's a full minute um, and just to pause and enable people to reflect and think about the outcome of that and help imagine how they might see this future possible as we create these kinds of climate solution scenarios. Uh, again, here's some, you know, what would you love about being part of a two, less than two degree future? Different people writing in. I would love uh, to live with a humanity that made the impossible possible. Isn't that a beautiful image? Uh, less conflict from resource grabbing, better ability to work together and cooperate, uh, all kinds of different things. And then the next thing we have is the climate action simulation role play game. So I described a little bit of this. The climate action simulation is a group role playing game to explore solutions for addressing climate change. So the way this works is that you have your participants play global leaders from sectors across business, government, civil society, and it's as if they're gathered together to negotiate a climate solutions plan to limit global warming. And then the group, you have these different teams, the climate justice hawks, world governments, industry and commerce, land, agriculture, forestry, clean tech, and conventional energy, they all need different ways of communicating together. Um, so that's, this is where the breakout groups come in or perhaps maybe a WhatsApp group or some kind of mess way for the groups to message and negotiate their positions amongst themselves. Then they, as uh, negotiating teams, then propose actions that you test in inroads. So it's a way for people who perhaps uh, like, want to it's great for students who maybe are just learning about different climate solutions and don't have a lot of opinions about it themselves they can take on those different roles it's it's also great for uh people of all ages here's um some screenshots from a demo we did a week or so ago uh where we had people playing different roles you can see over there on the right um our colleague caroline uh has added a background to her webcam where she's showing uh, pollute, a polluting industry because she was on the conventional energy team. Uh, we're here we're using the UN flag. So bringing in different elements to, to highlight uh, the different roles in the climate action simulation. So some, some further tips on this. The climate action simulation game. I, I would say that it, it, in the online form, uh, you have to be prepared to manage the technology and think about uh, the ways in which people move in and out of groups. So that's gonna take, you know, give yourself three hours. This ideally could be done in two one and a half hour sessions. Maybe they're held in the same day with a break in between, or maybe they're held, you know, one session on one week, another session on another week. Uh, I think it could work well either way. And if you do, do run the climate action simulation in an online environment, we'd love to hear about it. I feel like there is a lot of innovation uh, that people could come up with in terms of ways to make this work well. Second, bring the drama, dress up, et cetera. You wear, uh, you know, as you're playing the role, one of the way, the key roles is that the facilitator fills in the climate action simulation is as the UN Secretary General. So you could start your webinar, maybe you're wearing more casual clothes, and then you come in when you're playing the sec UN Secretary General, uh, in your more formal business attire. Uh, if you have fun with it, your participants will have fun with it as well. Third, you need to figure out the, yeah, figure out the breakout rooms or the group chat features. Um, again, we recognize this, that's, that's a cha challenge with the technology. There are programs, software programs out there that enable this better than others. And I bet there are just creative ways in which to enable uh, the group to uh, chat and uh, and negotiate together. Next, send participants the guide to the control panel and other materials like a briefing statement.
I got that, mm -hmm. everyone, my computer decided to play some music. Um, that is my bad. <laughs> um, let me get back into things. Um, all right, the next thing on the list was to is to unmute speakers for their one minute speeches. So a part of the climate action simulation is for the groups after they've negotiated in their small groups to give one minute speeches about the policy or the action that they wanna see tested in inroads. Uh, so unmute them when they do that. Uh, then next, uh, just ask them to propose that in the chat or the questions, particularly if you're running out of time, managing that will be essential. Then halfway through, you can pretend that the UN environmental program or some agency has leaked the current scenario and you can send it out through the chat so that way people can play with inroads themselves. Uh, maybe in the first round, uh, groups aren't given access to inroads. Then also we just suggest to you that you check out our video that we have. So we, we did a record, we have a recording of the climate action simulation that we ran online. I don't know, Bindu or Linda, if you have if you can find that video and put it into the chat for everyone to check out if they're interested and see how we did it. And again, like I said, I imagine that there are many of you out there who have great ideas and innovations for how to do this even better. And we would love to hear from you. Uh, make sure to register your event and tell us about the details of how you figure out how to do uh, things like the climate action simulation online. And the final way in which we have to engage people is through this guided assignment or the worksheet. And there's kind of two ways to set this up. One is that you start by doing a demonstration of inroads, or you could give people uh, the 20 minute YouTube video that uh, we have. So let me show you this. Um, we have the inroads uh, assignment. So if I go under here, tools, uh, here's the inroads guided assignment. And if I click on this, you can find more details about it, but we also have a starting page that you could just email to your students or your participants and they can just run from it from here. Watch this video. It's, you know, it's an overview uh, with uh, subtitles in English uh, that walks through inroads, what it is, how to use it, the different features of it. Uh, your participants can watch that and then they can access the assignment to fill in. And I'll just show you what this, this assignment looks like. So you can see here, um, the steps are all written out. And then as you go along, you can, you're can you asked different questions, like um, how the whole point of it is that the participant creates their own inroad scenario that limits warming well below two degrees. And so they have to create a scenario that meets these different goals and then kind of self-assess how well they did in terms of addressing those goals in terms of climate, in terms of economy, equity, uh, the environment, and other elements like that. So then uh, we also have two different versions of it. Uh, you can look back on the student assignment page and find a longer form or a shorter form uh, and figure out what, what makes the most sense for the groups that you're working with. Uh, do they have a background knowledge about Climate, act, climate action or climate policy, or do you want to just try and keep it simple? And the final point, we are piloting it. Uh, I would say too, if you're, if you're interested in using the inroads guided assignment and you think you will be using it, write into the, write into the chat box right now. Um, Linda and I were talking today about just wanting to uh, talk with teachers or educators or people out there who are using it. We'd love to know how it's working for you. That, that kind of goes for all of these different tools. Uh, we're, we're learning alongside you in terms of what works well online. And if you come up with some creative way of using En-ROADS in an online environment, we'd definitely love to hear us. Feel free to email us at support at climateinteractive.org. So at this point, I'll launch another poll. So th in this one, I'm curious just how ready you are. Some of you will maybe on this webinar and you've already gone through different trainings and you're like, yes, uh, I'm just trying to get the specifics, but I'm going to lead it and maybe I'll do it with others on my team or I'll just go for it myself. Um, that's one option. Two, some of you all may be joining, maybe you're thinking about leading it, maybe you're thinking about reaching out 
to an inroads climate ambassador or to someone else to help you lead it uh, others of you may just be learning maybe this is your first time on a climate interactive webinar learning about what inroads is and the potential there uh, you're not yet ready to lead something or something else and if you select other feel free to write that into the questions box as you all are voting i see results coming in thank you very much and i will close the poll here and share the results let's see so what we see here is most of you all are just learning at this point and thinking about these tools and what what we've got to offer uh, and then a good portion of you are just ready to lead it that's exciting to hear um, and yeah hope, hope you uh, have a great audience and a great experience using it and then a few of you all thinking about inviting others or um, have some other plans thank you all and let me pause here um, Bindu are you seeing any questions coming in that I should address just briefly right now I will take a lot more questions at the end uh, but just if there is anything that comes to mind or anything else that I maybe moved too, too fast through that I should go back and explain If not, I'll keep rolling. Um, so one very important thing is for any time you run an inroads, an event with inroads, uh, we really, really, really encourage you, please, please, please register your event. Uh, this is helpful to us uh, in continuing you to provide you all with all of these materials, the simulator, um, and all and webinars like this for free. Um, we want, we need to be able to show our funders that there are people out there who are using these tools. Uh, so please register your event, even if it's not uh, public or you're just using it in a classroom setting, or maybe you're just using it in your living room with uh, three other people, or or you're doing a online event with just a couple friends. Like register your event. Uh, it's it's very helpful for us. And if you're registering your event and it's an online event and you're asked about the location, I'd encourage you just to set the location as where you're speaking from, uh, even if you're engaging an audience that's all over the world, like we are right now. Um, one other thing too I will say is uh, if you go to uh, support.climateinteractive.org, let me actually, I'll show you all this, um, you can find our support page and that is where to you can you can get you can use our forum so we have a forum in which lots of people are able to write into and have different topics so for example i mentioned earlier like looking for other facilitators and users so you can see uh over here some forum topics and you can connect with others and find people in different regions and areas uh, there have been people who've chimed in from all different corners of the world if you don't see uh, your region you know you can start another thread there's also topics in the forum about specific applications of inroads you know here's a thread about using inroads with 10 to 15 year olds um, and different questions like that so you can join here you can start a new topic and participate or if you want to write to us uh, and ask a more specific question rather than posting it publicly on the forum, you can open a support ticket and uh, fill that in and select new support ticket. And then that will go in, go to our team that's on the support side answering different questions uh, like that. So I do want to make sure that resource is out there. That's just support.climateinteractive.org. You can also access that from our homepage, uh, but that is out there. So we just have a minute left we haven't gotten into the questions but i will say you know it's been an hour if you need to roll on uh with the rest of your day or your evening wherever you are uh, feel free to do that and sign off however we can stick around for some questions and i'll try and get to any of the questions that perhaps uh bindu and linda and Cassandra weren't able to address in the questions box um on that and I, I will say, Bindu, do you see any good uh, questions uh, that I should tackle just right now? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, some people were asking the difference between seedors and indoors because it looks like a lot of people are familiar with old climate simulation and many might have run it already. So if you can just uh, re-emphasize the difference between two. Yeah, sure. Um, and so let me do that. I'm going to go to the, here on the Climate Interactive website. So we have C-roads and inroads. Today, I've been showing you inroads. This is a tool that divides the world up into inter different sectors, different types of solutions, coal taxes, energy efficiency, that kind of thing. Our other tool, C-Roads, focuses on uh, the same question of how do we limit warming to below two degrees, but instead of dividing the world by different economic sectors, the world's divided into geographic regions. So there you can test questions like what should, uh, when should China peak their emissions? And when do the other developing countries peak their emissions and then reduce their emissions to create a world that's less than two degrees? Um, so that is great as a way to simulate what the UN climate change negotiations are like, where you have different uh, countries playing parties, working to create a global deal on climate change. And the role playing game that we have that is called the World Climate Simulation. That's been used for many years. Uh, it's great to hear that some of you out there are familiar with it. And that could also be run online. And if you are interested in the World Climate Simulation, we have uh, a webinar coming up. Let me see if I can get the webinars page later this month. So on April 29th, you can register how to facilitate a World Climate Simulation virtually. That is coming up. Uh, later in the month in a few weeks. Uh, if you want more tips, kind of it'll be along the same lines as what we have done today where we've gone through what are some of, some of the uh, ways in which to think about how to do this. We're going to do that in partnership with our partners at the University of Massachusetts Lowell Climate Change Initiative. Um, and uh, other questions? Yes, uh, there are a couple of related questions on uh is group for which this is particularly suited so also there are questions like uh, is it suitable for middle school students and for differently abled students mm -hmm. yeah so um let me get back to the three again the three different types i could um, and i would say that we have, I would say that the Inroads Climate Workshop can be used with younger students. One of the things to be sensitive to as you think about working with middle school, say in that 10 to 15 year old uh, age range, is just the vocabulary that's used. Uh, and so think about some of the extra steps that you might take as an educator if you're using uh, this tool with them. And, being sensitive that you might have to spend a little more time explaining what different things are or work to put things into different terms. So for example, on the simulator, you might see have something like a forestation. And then you as a as an educator would tell the kids, well, this is really about tree planting. And that works, of course, for people of all ages too. Not everyone knows what a forestation is. But um, but I would say go for it, let us know how it goes. Um, you also might have seen over on the forum uh, when I showed you all that, we do have a section where there's some discussion about using inroads with younger groups out there. Um, I, I think probably the most popular age range uh, that we see inroads being used is in college settings, undergraduates, um, some with high schoolers too. Uh, but again, you know, you want to take that time to make sure they're familiar with the different settings and uh, explain the dynamics in a way that, they, that, that is accessible to them. And then of course, uh, beyond college, there are lots of settings in which En-ROADS is used with adults too. So it's by no means limited to students. Good question, thanks. And maybe I'll add one more point there. Uh, I saw a question, not exactly question, a comment there uh, asking uh, that, if it can be run over several days, of course, for especially for classroom settings. So that is totally possible. Some of our facilitators have already tried that out, uh, running inroads 
workshop or game in in the multiple course of days so that is totally possible yeah definitely other questions that are out there yeah Eli, i can actually see a lot of people asking about the translation and in fact some of um, our attendees uh, were also expressing their interest for a uh, translation so if you can elaborate on this yeah um definitely translation is on our minds at climate interactive and we are working to get first off i think our first step has been to get the materials for the climate action simulation translated and but we really hope in the next six months to be able to have a version of inroads like what we're looking at here translated into a different language so that you could use it if you're in china and maybe it's in mandarin or if you're uh somewhere else that that it can be available and our sea road simulator if you're familiar with that already is available in several different languages um so i would say too to email us if you are if you if you are a translator or have the resources to get inroads translated into a language that you work with then um, do email us at support at climateinteractive.org we would be interested in exploring those partnerships a lot of the translation that has been done uh, on climate interactives tools previously has been thanks to volunteers some of you may be on the line right now people who've taken the time to do the translation work for maybe their class or whatever and then uh, we've been able to turn around and make it available to everyone else for free so uh, i do hope to see more translations in the future um, that's definitely on our mind but good question and i that also uh reminds me i do have another poll to run so let me run the last poll and um and i'm just curious here so we're thinking about how what, how does climate interactive show up in this world right now it feels like so much is changing and so i'm really curious to ask you all we we just talked about translation but what do you think climate interactors priorities should be to deliver the maximum impact right now do you think it is on translating inroads or what about running another series of our training series to get people more familiar with the model dynamics and aspects like that we could write more op-eds and share our analysis in papers uh, more things like what the best on is doing or should we add more detail in the food land and agriculture sector or is it just more extensive sharing of scenarios on social media uh yeah we're just curious what your input is on what we should be up to and that kind of thing and if you have some other ideas feel free to write it into the questions box and uh yeah let me i'll give you all here a few more seconds to fill it in thanks for those of you all who are sticking around totally understand if you need to go uh we are over the hour and i'm happy to stick around a little bit longer and we'll add answer some more questions okay let me close the poll and here i'll share the results so top result sharing our analysis in papers and op-eds we hear you and uh that, that's great feedback to hear and we'll think about you know what might be might, might be in store in that but then really we see a lot of uh time uh some of you all see different things you know second in second place there we have more detail on food land and agriculture we have a team of modelers uh, that is thinking about this and diving into that so that's good to see more trainings in there in the mix translations like we said we just talked about great thank you all um then do you see another question out there that uh would be good to answer yeah, I think we have covered most of the questions. Uh, so thanks to Linda and Cassandra who have been uh, replying in that questions box. Uh, I just wanted to uh, re-emphasize, uh, I can see a lot of uh, comments saying that uh, people are planning to run their events, uh, workshop or game. So if you are planning one, please uh, do not forget to register your event. So that was what i wanted to re-emphasize plus uh if there are any other questions which in case we missed out uh feel free to send out or share your new ideas about translation or about uh, anything that you would like to discuss at support at the rate climate interactive.org great thank you so thank you all so much for joining today uh for your participation and engagement 
uh, we're really excited to see your screenshots of and pictures of you running your inroads uh, online events in socially distant ways and I hope you all are washing your hands and uh, being safe out there I know this is a tough time and uh, just really appreciate you all for um, your engagement and staying engaged on this topic and uh, you know here we are I think we have people joining us from many different countries I know when people were joining I saw names from Thailand and Hong Kong and the United States and uh, I think we had a few people in from Australia uh, so uh, many of those time zones where there's still people awake and uh, our webinars earlier today had people from across Europe and beyond so know that there are a bunch of other people out there like you wondering how do we engage people on climate in this current moment and uh, thank you all for joining us today and for engaging in these questions uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your day thanks for joining bye Thank you, Ellie. Bye.